Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. I'm Rex Finance and today we're going to be talking about a great company. A company that not has only not only has grown my channel, but a company that stock price has 8xed. It's grown 8 times over its previous price. I've talked about this company on my channel several times. You guys love these videos, and yes, we're talking about Workhorse Group today. I'm wearing the fedora, so we mean business, and we're going to get down to business today. Now, we recently hit 5.3 thousand subscribers on YouTube, which is insane to me. The growth has been unreal. We've been growing almost more than Workhorse's stock price has, and that's saying something. So I really appreciate it. If you guys enjoy my channel, share my channel with one of your family members or your friends. I would really appreciate that. Also leave a like down below if you like the content that I'm putting out. Now I have to say this isn't going to be a bare bones video on Workhorse Group. We're going to be talking about the likelihood that they win or land the United States Postal Service next generation delivery vehicle contract that was a mouthful so if you guys feel bad for me leave a like down below anyways if you guys are new to workhorse group workhorse stock in general check out the top link in the description down below it takes you to a video that i did on workhorse group back when the share price was three dollars and 14 cents or something crazy Check that video out. I go over Workhorse's bare bones. I go into the meat and potatoes of the company, how they make money, their catalyst, all everything, everything, all every, all everything. That's the new word. All every, I go over all everything of Workhorse Group. So go check out that video. So yes, as you can see, here's the video, the Tesla that nobody knows about. You guys know Tesla stock has soared exponentially over the past couple weeks. Workhorse really is a Tesla that nobody knows about. This is kind of an unheard of company right now in the electric vehicle sector, but they have their own little niche in the electric vehicle sector, so they're really going to be a monopoly in their niche. They manufacture and produce electric delivery vehicles, and they're in the running for a $6.3 billion contract with the United States Postal Service, the USPS. I'll be referring to them as in this video. So as you can see here, I recommended buying them at $3.14 way back when on May 4th, 2020. And my average cost in this video was $2.95, which I actually was able to lower that to $2.84, which has been a great thing. Now, it's crazy how much this company's grown. We peaked at $22 a share, and we're sitting at around $16 a share right now. But I think we're going to shoot up to $22 again and beyond in the near future and I'm going to try and convince you why in this video so stay tuned. Now I should probably say before we get into this the United States Postal Service contract is not needed for investors to make a positive return on Workhorse stock. It's a big catalyst, it's a big supplement but Workhorse has so many things going for them and again check out that video like I said and it will go through all of those things. Even if Workhorse, if the low chance we don't get any of the USPS contract, we're still going to see positive returns on our investment over the coming year, in my personal opinion. However, I should probably preface this and say, if Workhorse gets 75% of this contract, we're looking at $100 per share on the stock price, easily. In my opinion, not just my opinion though, in a lot of investors' opinions, I mean, the stock price is going to be $100 because this company is going to become that much more valuable. However, something people might not know about Workhorse is that they're in the running not only for the United States Postal Service contract, but they're negotiating deals currently with the United Kingdom and Australia, as you can see by that news article. So again, if we don't get the United States Postal Service contract, it's no big deal. We're, our market is huge. And if we get those two other Postal Service deals on top of the United States Postal Service deal, wow, I don't even know what to say. I mean, our share price would be $200 or more. However, I think Workhorse will get 50%, maybe a little bit more of this contract. And that's being a little conservative with my mindset. If Workhorse got 50% of the United States Postal Service contract, that would equal $3.15 billion over the course of five years. Another thing people might not realize on top of that is that included in this contract, whoever lands a contract gets 
the money from repairs and maintenance of these vehicles. So we're looking at another billion dollars in revenue potentially or more for whoever lands this contract. So needless to say, this contract is a big deal. So without further ado, we should probably get into the reasons why Workhorse is going to get the bulk of this contract. And we're going to start off with the fact that things are going green. We're seeing states passing laws requiring electric vehicles, especially electric commercial vehicles, driving around. This law passed by California requires all commercial vehicles to be emission free by the year 2040. So there's little ways for this to set in, to come to fruition per se, but there's different milestones along the way. There's a milestone in 2024 where companies can't sell emission vehicles and so on. So if you're the leader of the USPS and you see laws like this passing around the country, you're really thinking, I need to build my fleet with zero emission vehicles. And guess who the only zero emission manufacturer left in the bidding process is? That's Workhorse Group. The USPS leader isn't going to be looking to build their fleet with diesel and gasoline powered engines if laws like this are being passed around the country prohibiting them. That would almost be equal to peeing into the wind. I mean, it's pointless because in five to 10 years, if they went with building up their fleet with gasoline powered engines and they have to redo it all and renovate their vehicles or even manufacture completely new vehicles, come out with a completely new contract to contract zero emission vehicles, they're just wasting money. And let me tell you, the USPS doesn't have money to waste. So if you're looking at this, if the leader of the USPS is smart, He's saying, I need to build my fleet with zero emission vehicles now so I don't have to redo this entire process and spend another $6.3 billion on 180,000 new vehicles because of these laws. I need to pass this now. I need to build these vehicles now that are zero emission to save me money down the road. I think the leader of the USPS is smart and I think they're going to do that. And again, Workhorse is the only electric battery powered hybrid prototype in the running left. I mean, when the bidding started for this, there were 20 plus companies submitting proposals and we're down to four companies and Workhorse is one of the four, which leads me into my second reason I believe Workhorse is going to land this contract. And that is that Workhorse is the only American made, American first, American only company left in the running for this contract. The only other semi-American group that has submitted a proposal for this vehicle is Ford and Oshkosh. They are a partnership and even Ford outsources. They are not American first. They outsource a lot of their manufacturing. So we know Donald Trump has an American first mindset and attitude. Do you think he's going to advise the USPS general to give the contract to a non-American company or a company that outsources all of their manufacturing or a company that outsources most of their manufacturing? No, they're going to give the contract to a company like Workhorse that is 100% American manufactured. And you got to think, this is the United States Postal Service. Are they going to dish out a contract to a non-United States company? Are they gonna dish out the contract to a non-American company? That should be a pretty simple answer and that answer is probably not. They are going to focus on keeping jobs and adding jobs in America. They don't wanna support companies overseas, especially with a Republican president who believes in the great infrastructure of the United States of America. So in addition to this, on May 8th of 2019, Donald Trump actually tweeted out about Workhorse. You can see the word Workhorse here. I just highlighted it on the screen. And when he tweeted this tweet, Workhorse stock went flying. It was worth like 75 cents a share. And by the end of the day, it was $2.20 per share. So that just shows you the power that Donald Trump has when he tweets. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. But that just shows you the kind of power that the President of the United States has, even over the stock market, even if he didn't mean to cause that spike in the share price of Workhorse. And this Trump tweet leads me in to the next point. And that is that Workhorse is backed by Donald Trump, Ohio Senators, and Governor, and their manufacturing plant is in Indiana, which is Mike Pence's home state. And if you guys were not aware, 
Mike Pence was recently at the reveal of Lordstown Motors Endurance pickup truck and Workhorse owns 10% of that company. So, it's pretty evident that Donald Trump and Mike Pence know who Workhorse is. They know they're an all-American company. They want to help this company thrive. So, on the screen now, I have the Ohio local senators uh, standing with Dwayne Hughes, who is the CEO of Workhorse. So, this is just more evidence that, you know, these senators back Workhorse, and they want Workhorse to thrive to bring more jobs to their area. In addition to that, Workhorse is already in talks with the federal government of the United States because of their drone technology. Workhorse submits analytics, details, anything imaginable about their drone and their drone technology, the information they gather, they send it all to the federal government. So the government knows who Workhorse is. And Ohio is a swing state. Workhorse is based in Ohio. Politics aside, if Trump wants to win again in 2020, he needs Ohio. Ohio is a swing state, like I just said. A good way to get Ohio is bring a bunch of jobs to Ohio. So it's pretty safe to say Republican senators, Republican representatives, Donald Trump, Mike Pence are more than likely pushing for Workhorse to win this contract. And on top of that, the leader, the new leader of the USPS is a major donor to the Republican Party. If you can connect the dots, you can see that it's looking more and more likely that Workhorse is going to win a pretty large portion of this contract. The next reason why I think it is highly likely that Workhorse is going to win a big percentage of this contract is because of their alliance and partnership with Duke Energy who is helping support the faster adoption and scaling of Workhorse's fleet electrification. On top of that, they have a battery recycling program in the works with Duke Energy, where they repurpose old batteries for energy storage with solar farms, wind farms, you name it. Now, that was kind of a small reason, but the next reason is a bigger one, and that reason is Workhorse's drone technology. If you guys were not aware, the United States Postal Service has actually already came out and said that they are looking at attacking the drone delivery market. It's a very cheap option versus having these vehicles drive back and forth along streets and neighborhoods to, to transfer their packages and mail. So the fact that the United States Postal Service has came out publicly and said this and on top of that, Workhorse is the only company that has drone technology like this. Workhorse owns several patents with their drone technology, and one of them is they can, they're the only company that can launch a drone from the top of a delivery vehicle. That's a huge patent. If other companies want to do that, they're going to have to pay Workhorse big bucks. And I don't think the United States Postal Service is going to be interested in doing that. So... Really, if you're the United States Postal Service here, you're looking at this like, uh, if we're looking seriously at doing drone delivery, we might as well go with a company that's already implemented their drone technology into the market and has already begun testing this technology. So reason number six, the final reason why I believe Workhorse is going to win a big portion of this contract is because these vehicles, the other vehicles in the running Man, they look terrible, and I that might just be me, but I'll show a picture up right here. If you guys look at these vehicles, which one looks the best? Which one can you imagine driving around your block, driving around your neighborhood, delivering mail? Which one of these vehicles can you see being driven around? The only logical answer to me is Workhorse. Now, I might be a little bit biased, but their vehicle is the only normal looking one that I can actually envision driving on the streets. We already mentioned that Ford outsources a lot of their manufacturing. In addition to that, another player in the running is Carsan. Carsan is a Turkish company. Again, they're probably looking at giving the contract to an American company. Carsan is not an American company. It's a Turkish company. In addition to that, Carsan failed the Taxi of Tomorrow bid in New York City. If they fail at that bid, why would they find success in building the new fleet for the United States Postal Service? Another player in the running is Mahindra. Mahindra is an Indian company. Again, who is the United States Postal Service going to give this contract to? Somebody in the United States more than likely. 
In addition to that, Mahindra creates quads and stuff like that, so their business really isn't focused on delivery vehicles like Workhorse is. In addition to that, Mahindra said they will only operate an American plant if they land a portion of the contract. Why would America give an Indian company part of our infrastructure, part of the fleet for our United States mail? If the only way they would come to America is if they landed a portion of the contract, it doesn't make sense. Workhorse seems like the only liable option to me, which is why I'm so bullish on this company. And again, even if we don't win this contract, we don't land this contract, it's not the end of the world. And I believe truly that my investment will be worth more a year from now, regardless of what happens with the United States Postal Service. So in closing, that's all I had for you guys today. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like down below. Comment how many shares of Workhorse you guys own and at what cost basis I would love to compare and to see where my viewers are at. Again, if you're new or returning, hit that subscribe button. Check out the two videos I linked down in the description, especially if you're interested in Workhorse Group. With that, have a great two days. I'll be back on Wednesday with a brand new video. Peace out.